Here are my tips for making your documents accessible. And this works for Google Docs and it also works for Word. Uh, I'm gonna use Google Docs first and then I'm gonna show you on Word. There are basically three tips. One of them is using headings. This makes it easier for someone who's using a screen reader to find something automatically, but it also actually helps a sighted person find things faster. I'll show you how. The second thing is how you use links. And the third thing is how you create tables. So the first thing is sometimes when we're creating a document that has several different sections, like an introduction and a literature review and a methodology, we just use like bold or italic or just different font sizes to emphasize headings. For someone who's using a screen reader, this means nothing. But you can use what's called headings. So when you're on Google Docs, you just go to the place where it normally would say normal text. If you select your text, it will tell you normal. Don't just change the font or the size or the bold. Go to this and choose heading one or heading two. And you can just use the default of that document. Or you can actually, like I'm going to make this one a heading two. And then I, I actually want my heading two to be like a different color. So uh, someone using a screen reader won't see that, but someone who's sighted would see a different color. And so you could just say update heading two to match so that if I try to do heading two again in another place, like the methodology, it'll be blue, see? So I'm gonna go through my document and do this, make sure that all my headings are either a heading one or a heading two. You can also do heading three, like there are all these different levels, right? And then what happens automatically on a Google Doc is, do you see this? It automatically creates a document outline where someone who just opens your doc and just goes straight to the methodology section or straight to the conclusion section. And they can see what is the larger heading, what's the smaller heading. Uh, you know, they can clearly see that some things are indented because they are heading two or heading three or there are different levels. And so then it becomes really easy for someone to use your document and find things quickly, especially if it's a longer document, right? And one thing I'm going to show you also, which is really useful if you're writing like a thesis or something, uh, or even a syllabus, is you can insert a table of contents automatically. So you just click insert, you go to the very bottom of all the options and it's table of contents, and you can either insert one with page numbers or without, with dotted lines or not. And that automatically has everything in your table of contents. Now, if I go and change the conclusion and call it something else like another conclusion, that automatically updates here. And also, if I go to the very top, I can just update the table of contents by clicking that update table of contents icon, which is like a, like a recycle icon. And do you see how that updates now? All right, now I want to tell you something about links. So I can just click here, right? Because I have a table of contents. So an important note about links is that it's important that a link has meaning. I'm just going to create a new page here. Insert page break. All right. So we can just look at links. If you have a lot of links in an email or in a document or anything, if you keep just hyperlinking the word link, someone with a screen reader who's trying to find a link will just find something's called a link, link, link. And if you call them that, then it's really difficult for them to find it easily. But what is a better thing to say is, for example, if you want to link to the web page of AUC, then select the entire words web page of AUC, right click, insert link, and just put in AUC's link. And then the other one is Mahabeli's blog. Just go there, control K, and hyperlink the entire Mahabeli's blog, those three words. That way, when someone's looking for links, they can see web page of AUC and the hyperlink. They can see Mahabeli's blog and a hyperlink, not just a random something that's called a link, a link, a link, or here, 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 okay? The third tip I wanna give you is about tables. It's better if you have tables that have the same number of rows and columns throughout. So here's one that I just made. It's just uh, three by four, three columns and four rows. And if you start doing things like splitting a cell, these kinds of things make it really difficult for someone with a screen reader to follow. You see, don't do what I just did right now. Um, and also merging creates an issue. So if you do this kind of thing, you see how, what I did there, I merged two columns. That also makes it difficult for someone with a screen reader to follow because the screen reader is expecting a table to be um, the same number of rows, same number of columns so that it knows what's going on. So those, this is how you do it on Google Docs.
Now to do it on Microsoft Word, it's actually quite similar. I've just got 